Howdy again, it's Tubal Cain. I'm continuing this series on threading on the lathe and I'm standing here next to the closing lathe now. I'm going to show you yet another way of, of threading and uh, now we're talking about uh, when it's dangerous and you're up against a shoulder or you're near the chuck jaws and you're just afraid to death you're going to crash the thing. And it's so easy to, to crash it when you're threading because uh, uh, just a lot of things going on in the machine and in your head. So as you come up against that shoulder, if you don't kick it out of uh, uh, the half nut uh, mode or if you don't throw the clutch in or whatever, you're going to strike something, you're going to probably break the tool, ruin the work, and possibly strip some gears or damage the lead screw or something like that on your lathe. So. Uh, we do have an undercut here and I often like to start or finish at an undercut when I'm threading and uh, this is one that I did years ago but rather than come into the work like this and then have to stop it I'm going to show you an alternate way so I, now I will change the setup. All right, we're back to having Delrin installed in the machine. Now, I've had a lot of comments from people saying that uh, what I'm doing is crazy in regards to uh, uh, using the half knot lever uh, to begin and end every thread. And they're saying, why don't you uh, just always leave the half knot engaged and then just back the work out in reverse? And there are several reasons for that. And uh, if, if what you're doing works, why well, go ahead with it. But uh, when you, first of all, it's hard to stop the machine in the exact right spot if you don't have a clutch on the lathe. If you just turn the switch off, you got some coasting going on. So, uh, but what they're saying is now just put it in reverse and go all the way back out. Well, when you do that, you also have a certain amount of backlash in the, uh, in the carriage and uh, the lead screw and the gears and everything else. So, uh, as you reverse it, you're not truly tracking the thread. You may think you are. Also, it may tend to dull the tool when you're uh, cutting steel. So those are my reasons for not doing it that way. And uh, the way I'm suggesting here, and it might sound a little foolish, and I learned this from my brother Jan, but he's, we install the tool upside down. So here I have an entire tool holder with a 60 degree threading tool held upside down in the Aloris tool holder. And there are, would be other ways. You could hold that tool directly in here, but I've got it in a tool holder. It's on center, but it's upside down, and we're going to thread with the lathe in reverse. And that way we can uh, use our lead screw and feed from left to right rather than from right to left, and there's no danger of scratching. Uh, not scratching. <laughs> uh, crashing. Okay. I have the lathe, lathe running in reverse, and I'm going to take a few passes, and uh, the camera's been repositioned. I hope you can hear me. There's the first pass. Ten threads per inch yet. Coming back in. Second pass. Third pass, no danger of crashing the lathe. Fourth pass. The nut's going on just a hair tight. It actually should have another very light pass, but uh, there we have it in. Uh, uh, four passes. Let's review what it did now. 
Uh, we have the lathe uh, set up the same as we did in the last video with the exception of the tool being upside down but also set on center and we are turning the lathe spindle in reverse. Everything else is the same and uh, it would take you much longer when you're cutting steel of course but this is a good uh, good trick. You may never use it but it, I, I think maybe you will find it of interest. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.